the pleasure to present uh, Vladimir Benes. Uh, he, he is uh, the head of the gene core of the European Molecular Biology Laboratory uh, Scientific Core Facilities. Uh, he has a long lasting experience uh, and uh, in the field and uh, we, we we built this group in order to assist researchers with functional genomic project. And recently, he enlarged his expertise to single cell genomic approach. So I I, I thank Vladimir to accept this in, invitation, and I give you the uh, the, the the word and and uh, please start your talk. Good. Thank you, Pamela, very much uh, for your kind introduction. Just to, do you hear me okay? Do you see the slide on the screen? Is yes, yes. Yeah? yes. Right. Good. So as Pamela mentioned, I am in charge of uh, core facility, which of course inherently is a support platform here at the MBL. Uh, we have outreach to many researchers also in the member states of the MBL. And what I'm going to share with you this afternoon is experience which uh, I have amassed uh, through interactions with uh, our colleagues. And uh, I apologize, let's say the title announced is different, but uh, somehow I believe there is a convergence. And I decided to add this flow cytometry into the equation. Uh, with the subtitle that is just more than the marriage of convenience. Because uh, what we see that the upstream steps before it reaches the sequences are actually much more critical than the sequencing itself. It's at, at the end delivers what has been the result or the outcome of all previous steps. So let me start with this uh, quote, which has been issued by Tabula Muris Consortium, they published two articles on the cell atlases, uh, one of senescence. And then the statement is that, of course, you can analyze uh, three prime and gene expression profile of many, many cells, thanks to uh, 10x genomics and maybe some other platforms. But uh, uh, using flow cytometry, that actually gives you as uh, enabling another phenotypic measurement and, and going into that resolution of full length transcriptome that uh, the information you are getting may be much richer. Of course, it doesn't mean that even when you are using tennis genomics or again, other things that uh, you should or could not include uh, flow cytometry into the workflow. Maybe it's even desired, but depends upon the uh, experimental design. And that, of course, there is much more to that. But before, sorry, I need to use this. Uh, what we are experiencing is again another paradigm shift in biology. And I this is very intriguing because Walter Gilbert in 1991 was kind of uh, complaining that then I replaced this uh, genome sequencing with single cell RNA sequencing in the in the caption uh, that suddenly everything is becoming so so easy and that I think is first maybe flag I would like to raise uh, here because the technology is uh, maybe um, replacing or substituting the the principle, let's say, idea behind why we are conducting uh, uh, and are involved in research, that of course, that's the, that's the idea, the question we are pursuing. And uh, it's good to have uh, the technology, somehow it's coming along, but as such, we should not be in tag uh, with the technology itself. And I think this is uh, now becoming so easily accessible that uh, we are ignoring the caveats which are uh, associated with the with the method. Just as a refresher, we are all on the same page. Uh, of course, uh, we are all experts in that these days. So, but uh, we frequently, and again, that's from my experience, 
forget about the basics. So of course, individual cells are a natural principal unit of form and function in biological system. And if we have the method which is enabling us to uh, register the information provided by that principal unit, of course, we are much more enriched. But it's clear that uh, also it is on the level of individual cells, but in the context uh, that makes the decision being good or bad. But what is not clear, how, when and why, and what are the cues uh, to which the individual cell is um, reacting or acting upon. Now, uh, bulk sequencing has been mentioned on several occasions during this afternoon, and of course, it has been uh, appreciated that we have this problem with averages, that uh, the resolution is limited. And then again, going to that natural principle unit, that resolution can be, of course, improved. And uh, also, hopefully, what we know about the system. However, uh, the method is really written with or confronted with uh, several caveats. And first is already with that partition, because uh, we are working or trying to work. And Lukash showed us one of the very challenging systems, brain, that how that uh, partition into single cell from multicellular mass does affect biology, that we really measure biology and not, uh, let's say, technical influence of our uh, of our measures applied. Clearly, the method is noisy because still everything what we discuss in this context is uh, driven by stoichiometry. And for single cell analytics, we have only so much analyte available. The transcription itself doesn't work in continuum as we maybe would like to have it, but in pulses. There are many confounding factors. Here I mentioned the cell cycle, but there are many more. It's still as a, just a snapshot and not a dynamic picture. And last but not least, uh, there are other assumptions that somehow we believe uh, are then addressed maybe by computation analysis or by some other means. So to give that in the context, so if we compare what bulk versus single cell analysis can give us, of course, that as I mentioned, there is uh, no resolution. We deal with the mass of cells and their transcripts, and we get unstructured. Uh, that's, uh, I, I would say, admitted uh, an incomplete picture, but it depends on many factors how truly incomplete and incomplete. But of course, in this context, we are not able to get into the cell population. Now, of course, in uh, cell single cell analysis when we are working with dissociated sample and as i already alluded to that dissociation itself uh, can cause uh, problems and uh, affect the biology because cells are extremely swift in triggering uh, sos responses of all kinds so i would put into again quote uh, on quote on how complete that picture is and of course, the resolution inherently is better and higher. But uh, what we see in literature that some conclusions are maybe stretched too far. And there, there is this population of interest. And it is then described as a new cell population. But because it's just a snapshot, we cannot tell for sure if it's not the transition from blue to green. And it's really nothing to do with new cell population. And let's say to maybe to bring it closer to our daily experience that bulk RNA would uh, maybe resemble the smoothie, which is truly, let's say, oops, oops, sorry, sorry, what, what, what happened? I did something, Ooh, my, my presentation, okay, good, sorry, uh, sorry, um, that we cannot tell what, uh, uh, which flavors they are truly in if it's very complex. Uh, and single cell provides the more complete or more detailed picture. However, I would uh, maybe another flag is that if you are blindfolded and I put in front of you gooseberry or kiwi, probably you wouldn't be able to tell without seeing what you are 
trying or, and tasting. So that resolution may not be truly complete. Nevertheless, uh, the single cell transcriptomics offers truly this new paradigm uh, for cellular heterogeneity and that, let's say, description. And of course, we see interesting phenomenon that uh, on the molecular level, that heterogeneity is actually much larger than on the level, let's say, of uh, individuum. Uh, and uh, that we see that the tissue, and I use here example of liver, which had been for a long time assumed to be very homogeneous, but with a single cell analysis, it turned out that it's actually not true. And uh, depending again on that context where that cell occurs in the organ, that uh, their transcriptome program can be fundamentally different from cell in the same organ, but in opposite end. So definitely single cell RNA-seq as a method is very well suited for generating cell atlases, but is not able to provide all answers. And here I would like to advocate that the experimental design is uh, extremely important because again, uh, with chromium, it's very easy, uh, I dare to say, to generate a lot of data. And uh, on, the, on the left side, is it no sorry on the on the right side to facing no facing you there are individual steps of, of the workflow and um, on the right side the challenges which are re related to that particular step and as you see there is quite a lot of them and of course uh, we probably are not able to address all of them due to technical limitations due to also let's say which type of technology we are using and so on and so forth. But there is danger that at the end, we end up with a result which is far from reality, again, quote unquote. So at this moment, I think, um, and would like to bring your attention to, let's say, sources of experimental variability, which is frequently ignored as human factor uh, on the top of the inverted pyramid is truly uh, behind most of our problems in, in, in this context. Then comes uh, cell harvesting. And here I mean how we dissociate cell uh, mass, uh, tissues, and so on and so forth. Because uh, what we should not forget, the method, again, still powerful, started with analysis uh, of PBMCs and blood, where Truly, cells are floating freely, and we need not worry about the dissociation step. But anywhere else we go, the problem is there. Of course, cDNA synthesis, PCR, and as I mentioned previously, when it gets to the sequencer, then everything above just kind of shows what probably went wrong or could have gone wrong, and maybe we need to be careful. And as so, as so often, the validation matters by another experiment or some other means. So I like uh, to remind uh, ourselves in this context that truly in, and again, a particular in single cell analysis, there's uh, the devil is in the detail and things can be completely wrong and uh, we are lacking uh, in single cell analysis uh, the reproducibility. Uh, unfortunately, we hopefully now with organoids that uh, we will have the possibility to calibrate our systems. I believe that as Lukash already mentioned that maybe spatial omics will show uh, better if how far we are from reality or not. So what we have learned that uh, the that the cell vitality or cell health when we are working with them is a key for successful single cell RNA experiment. I would say it is for all experiments when we try to analyze cDNA or RNA. And uh, we have observed that it compromised cell viability truly leads to lower quality of single cell RNA sequencing results, 
because uh, we the cell mass which contains different cell types which are not responding to the treatment the same way uh, of course can confound the the resulted picture in addition and then one of the sos signals can be truly the apoptosis trigger specific and very rapid uh, mrna decay but we operate frequently with that assumption that computational analysis can really clear the results and provide provide the answer so what is available to us because uh, ultimately we can tell alive uh, cells from dead cells with several um, let's say experimental parameters or assistance so of course uh, is a loss of membrane integrity and we can use dna binding dyes or if there is a uh, that uh, <clears throat> apoptosis uh, trigger activated there's either a phosphatidylserine exposition with annexin 5 labeling or activation of caspase pathways and then we can actually stain cells for detection of caspase this is um let's say again phenotype of apoptotic or necrotic cells there is a dna release to to medium which increases in viscosity re leading to some uh, clumps but with help of the tools uh, outlined above we can truly very specifically discriminate between viable early late apoptotic or truly dead cells and uh, here where the flow cytometry is coming to help and i think really the essential help that uh, this gives us the opportunity of the resolution so another le level of resolution which is again coming upstream so that we what we are working with is truly clean population healthy so we can of course take gate to remove debris we can remove uh, doublets from the samples by another gate but still by removal of debris doublet and dead cells we still have uh, other type and primarily the early apoptotic cells together with healthy ones but as mentioned previously with help of caspase c7 staining or xn5 we really can then take them out and uh, really work with bona fide alive and healthy cells now as I mentioned, one of those assumptions is that when we apply appropriate uh, computational bioinformatics tools, many things uh, can be cleared and the results also get more accurate. So we uh, tested that assumption in the experiment, which is outlined on this slide. So there were HEC293 cells, which were treated with taurosporin treatment, which is the inducer and apoptosis. And then were sorting so we were approaching it like informed uh, way that uh, we were that's um, as described on the previous slide sorting them for alive pre-apoptotic and apoptotic cells and then sequence them with 10x so three prime end uh, technology and smart seq2 protocols which is providing full length now there are two parameters which are, let's say, hallmark for healthy transcriptome, that mitochondrial genes are low and ribosomal protein genes are high because cells are, of course, doing their stuff. Uh, they are metabolizing, they are producing proteins and so on and so forth. But in apoptotic transcriptome, mitochondrial genes are high and uh, ribosomal protein genes are then suppressed. Uh, and decrease their expression. Now, I already mentioned that uh, the cDNA synthesis uh, is essential part of uh, our experimental approach to single cell transcriptomic analyses, and then uh, we have no way to avoid it. And already uh, very early, actually, if we have 21, so this is now 25 years ago, 
in the first experiment was noticed that negative result actually doesn't mean it's truly negative. So absence of the evidence is not the evidence of the absence. So that this reverse transcription step can introduce the artifacts which uh, we cannot really um, disentangle or filter out, so to say. Now, you see on, uh, on those uh, titles uh, from in several, uh, several journal articles that the uh, names of people who are also involved in, in this initiative of uh, microgenomics. And that has maybe culminated with uh, the paper by Daniel et al where they were comparing uh, several reverse transcript cases for single cell studies. Um, I think that uh, the outcome of this paper is very, very useful. Uh, and uh, I think it gives us an opportunity to get better results. But again, maybe the, what is important to reflect upon, does it truly deliver to the full picture? So back to that assumption, so we, as I mentioned, there was a, a live cells, early apoptotic and late apoptotic that you see the color coding is apoptotic are red, uh, green are healthy. Then, then we have pro or early apoptotic. And what you see that on the left, that actually all the apop truly apoptotic cells are standing out but we have no way to discriminate or distinguish healthy from early apoptotic. And uh, even when there is a computationally clear uh, sample set, still everything is standing together. Actually on, on the Disney plots, you see that there's a cloud is uh, not resolved. So in the data, there is then generated by pro-apoptotic and healthy, there is not sufficient information that the, those groups can be, can be separated. Now, therefore, well, we, we concluded or realized that the assumption truly doesn't hold. And um, when, as I mentioned previously, it may be another proof that it is uh, maybe quite possible to remove uh, the apo truly apoptotic cells out of the mixture. So this is that red cloud that's fairly homogeneous, uh, not perfect, but nevertheless quite. When we look for apoptotic gene signature, it maybe got slightly better when there was for cell cycle gene signature. But you see that the apoptotic cells are still in the cloud. So even with apoptotic uh, being separated, still they contaminate, so to say, our results, and then also may lead to the conclusions which are not reflecting reality. So, and then, of course, the question is, why does it matter? And uh, what, is, what is such a concern? So, as already mentioned previously, there's this fast decay of uh, messenger RNAs, which can again skew. You can then infer that there are a population of uh, messenger RNAs with rapid turnaround or turnover, which is what, of course, the result of uh, of the this apoptotic process. And uh, here we need really to be careful about that uh, reverse transcription step because so far. Almost all protocols are truly dependent upon poly A uh, tail. Uh, we are now seeing uh, some approaches when they're using um, randomers uh, for in, even single cell analysis, but by and large, it's only go the poly A tail, uh, which we need to be, uh, to be present on molecules we would like to analyze. And uh, in DK, um, the poly A tails are disappearing very rapidly and actually almost the first. And uh, in single cell analysis where the amount of analyte is literally limited, this Q uh, coming from that is, is even more pronounced. Vladimir, so, uh, there's only a few more minutes. Sure, I am almost at the end. So 
then we were looking again how clean are the clusters as i mentioned there's a ribosomal protein uh, and mitochondrial transcripts so if you look at them uh, included uh, sorry removed from that then apoptotic stands out there is a resolution fairly good for proapoptotic and healthy and then we have third cloud on the on the left however when we go and consider only the ribosomal protein transcript and mitochondrial genes you see that one of the clusters completely completely disappears and proapoptotic and healthy cells are in one one uh, cloud so in conclusion uh, it's important to keep in mind that life and that cell staining strategy with cell impermeable DNA dyes uh, can report flow cell on the if the DNA if a membrane is broken so it's actually good to use uh, permeable DNA dyes and they are uh, available these days uh, to include additional staining for an exin five or caspase actually helps you to improve the quality quote unquote of samples which you are using and um, regardless if you use uh, 10x or smart seed protocol the bioinformatics approach at the end is not sufficient to really deconvolute the the pool quote unquote so we have been um, let's say discussing at length uh, the experiment which i described you in, in this paper which was part of the um, compounding uh, volume of cytometry on, on quality but uh, and I, it holds still today so we try to or strive to implement uh, what we have learned to our daily workflow uh, this flow cytometry and, and gene core but what is clear that for the understanding of single cell anatomy the transcriptome is just not enough uh, Lukas told us about uh, the spatial transcriptomics which would be one additional module in the armamentarium of the studies on let's say understanding the functionalities of uh, cellular systems and here they are just not exhaustive but quite descriptive options which are out there but as already mentioned single cell is offering only so much which we can take out of uh, it and, and analyze so let me conclude with uh, acknowledging my colleagues who have been instrumental to to get there uh, so here my colleagues from flow cytometry and and gene core but for data analysis we team up with uh, my friend Raffaele Calogero from University of Torino and his uh, PhD student Luca so let me now pen penultimate slide there is uh, I like this this quote by Donald Rumsfeld he use that under different circumstance and in different context but i think that's actually really why we are involved and uh, sometimes suffering in in science and what also makes it so exciting and thank you for your attention and i wish you a nice day evening wherever you are take care